Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer, and uh, today I have with me Sumit Peer again, and we are going to discuss about what has been happening in this BBC documentary. We now have the exact source who fed all the information, the fake information, and there is a fair amount of churn happening inside BBC itself. That's one side. I hope you all watch my monologue on George Soros, how Hindus for Human Rights has no Hindus on its board. Do watch that uh, documentary to understand what is HFHR, how come a Muslim organization and with the blessings of Soros is funding this and what are the objectives, what has it achieved in a similar sister organization in Israel. You should understand that this is a well-planned uh, uh, initiative, people are throwing money at it and how do Indians counter that. To know all about this and more, let's welcome Sumit Pirji. Sumit Ji, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskaram Sam, Pranam to all, Vanakam to all, Sadhuat to all. Uh, Sumiji, um, so I I, um, I outlined what is happening in the United States, you know. I have told this before also in our channel. You know, Hindus are being used to fight Hindus. We are being turned against us. Don't ask me where the intellect of the so-called Hindus who will turn on Hindus goes. They probably left it in India. I don't know where it is. But clearly there is excrement filled in their craniums. That is my analysis. Sir, take it away. What is happening with this BBC saga? Uh, sir, thank you for the for the invitation. What is, uh, there have been a couple of changes and let's go a little bit into the past. You know, why, where did this come from? If you go into the history, you know, the problem came after the emergency. After emergency, Mrs. Gandhi took the support of communists or the Reds, I will broadly call them Reds, to the Reds to be in the power. There was a deal which was done with them. Media, institutions and textbooks. This will be left to them. They will control the, they will control the narrative. And if you see, that's why a lot of inst universities, institutions and the text which was written had that kind of a leftist orientation and connotation. So it continued and eventually by 1991, I think when the Russians and the KGB was not as strong as it was, and you know, lefts have been always funded by that. Then at that point of time, the CCP emerged. CCP started taking the reins and CCP started doing the things. I want to take you to one incident. You know, how, how closely these people are working and how they are using it. Because in communism, the first thing we must know, sir, is that violence is an accepted practice of statecraft. There is no problem with violence. There is no problem with bloodshed. There is no problem with people getting killed. They accept it. This is a part of the game. Right. So anybody who can be used with that is that. So and communists believe that religion is poison. So first you should be taken away from your religion because religion keeps people together. They are common ideologies. They are common beliefs. So they want to keep them together. Or they want to keep them together. So you separate the person from a religion. When the person is separated from a religion, he becomes a guided missile. You can guide him wherever you want to use it. Now, what happened in 1991? Let me take you to an example. For example, our Calcutta was the hub of the spinning industry or the hosiery. And it was literally dominating the whole world. Suddenly, a 144-day strike was called by the Reds, not Chalmin. And what happened? The entire industry moved to China. In this 144 days, we lost the complete industry. You know, and China took it over. Now, if you look at uh, the sterilite plant where we were net import, where we were net exporters of copper around three to five billion dollars, after one so-called protest and these uh, reds and all environmentalists all getting together, ganging up, and they said that there are environment problems and all, the plant was closed. From net exporters, we became net ex importers of copper. That is the reality of uh, the territory. They were in uh, Kundakulla, we wanted to set a nuclear plant. There were protests there. Now the question is not even that. Now go recently in the peak of in the peak of Corona when there was a lockdown, LG plant leaks gas and some people get killed. Winstron plant in Bangalore gets attacked by a mob of seven thousand people for some pity issue. And when we do the analysis, we find there are these. There's a very dangerous thing which has emerged out. That what I call what we call and what is commonly referred as red jihad. Red Jihad is where the jihadis are doing the dirty work. Like ISI is the henchman. Because ISI you will find everywhere. By default, that is the henchman. And who is funding the ISI? 
the reds are funding the ISA. When I mean by reds, I'm clearly referring to China. The China is channelizing the money and these guys are doing the dirty job. Now, sabotage, internal system breakup, using your own people against you, you know, uh, communal violence, communal unrest, protests, blockage, blockade, so, you know, kind of opposing all kinds of things together, having high profile lawyers, having high profile people, having a lot of NGOs come in and creating a whole tamasha is the part of the ecosystem. Now, what you rightly said, most of these people, unfortunately, who are a part of the ecosystem are Hindus. I'll give you one. A very recent example, you must have heard, she said in US, that you know, uh, this same sex marriage which has been, been in our Supreme Court for the last 15 days. I just did a, a simple analysis that the lawyers who were coming and representing the plea that same sex marriage should be allowed in India, though it's not allowed by the constitution and the Supreme Court wasn't in Delhi. Well, luckily, Supreme Court of India, with due respect to the Supreme Court, said that the government has to decide. So, the fees of the lawyers is one crore rupees per day if you add up their charges. Now, who is paying this 1 crore rupees per day? 1 crore per day is $120,000, broadly speaking. Who is paying this $120,000 per day for these lawyers? Then you go to the hijab protest. Then you go to the farm protest. Then you look at the BBC documentary. Then you look at the Hindenburg fiasco. Then you look at the Adani. Then there was some, for some time, they were also said that there were some issues brought around uh, Ramayan and Mahabharata. So these things are happening after every sequence of events. So what is happening is, now I want to take your attention to the Winston. Winston was the first Taiwanese manufacturer manufacturing smartphones here. How for a small issue, people of 7,000 people could be mobilized to attack the plant which gives you bread and butter. Now Foxconn is setting and said, I'm telling you, Sri Sir, what something will happen around that also. Because Foxconn was the showcase of Chinese manufacturing. It has moved India. Now, with it, now when we talk of decoupling of supply chains, friendly offshoring is a new concept which is being talked where people are moving to India. A lot of supply chains are moving to India. If I look at Nissan, if I look at Honda, if I look at that, if I look at Puma, if I look at uh, even Toyota, a lot of people have started moving their bases to India. And even if I look at Elon Musk, he has a gigabit plant which is coming up in Germany. The, today, there are problems of gas and all. Once they are sorted out, even he will reduce his manufacturing from China and move the majority of his manufacturing to Germany. With these chains, changes happening and delunking of supply chains happening, China's cumulative Dutch debt touching 53 trillion and more than 50% of the provinces having more than 45% of GDP as their debt. A lot of things are going to happen. And unfortunately, it might result into a lot of blood being spilled here, there, everywhere. So these people are using these jihadis, these, uh, what do you call these people in the ISI to cause a lot of trouble. Now, if I go specifically to a question, BBC documentary. Now we know that ISI and all, and their ISPR and the sleeper cells here and all have given this information to the BBC. There are two, three factors to bring about that documentary. First thing is they have not shot one single shot in India. They have not included everybody. Everything is copied from YouTube. And there was a Hindi movie called Firak. A lot of people will not know about it. But if you watch Firak, you will see how much of copy paste job is done for Firak and various YouTube channels. And you have made a documentary. BBC was in slumber for 22 years. When the Sessions Court, High Court, SIT and the Honorable Supreme Court of India gives clean shit to the Prime Minister Modi. Now, how do you stop Modi? How do you stop India? You use this thing. Now, is it... Untrue to say that every UK in every person in UK has to pay eight pounds for a TV license which goes to BBC. When Elon Musk's right to the state funded organization, the BBC objects. Oh, how are we state funded? We are not state funded, Mr. Musk. No. And now let's go to the today's fiasco. Mr. Shah, the BBC chairman. Now, she said his background is a, he was a banker. He is not a media guy, he's not a journalist, he, he has nothing to do with broadcasting, he's not an engineer, he was a banker. He was in Goldman Sachs and I think in 2001 to 2004, he was the boss of current Prime Minister of UK, Mr. Rishi Sunak. He was his boss. Rishi Sunak got him as an advisor into the government. That is the link number one. When Boris Johnson is in his power, Mr. Sharp helps through his network and contacts to get him or to secure a loan of 800,000 pounds. That is Mr. Sharp helps him. Well, now, so one, as a return dollars. of... Yeah. 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 One million dollars. In return of that, Shisha, in return of that, 
Mr. Sharp is rewarded with the position of chairman of British Broadcasting Corporation. And yet, we are told, we are supposed to believe BBC is independent. BBC are oxymorons. They don't exist. You know, people have used their political power. People have exchanged favors. You know, conflict of interest is reported in this. And the most important thing, now, if BBC is independent and this, document is, this documentary was made out of free will, ISI is not involved, the sleeper cells are not involved, ISBR is not involved, none of them are involved. Now, why did Mr. Rishi Sunak ask the BBC chairman to resign? If it's an independent body, can, can an information broadcasting minister or the Prime Minister of India ask Mr. Arnold Goswami, for example, to resign? No, he cannot. Can he ask Mr. Shri Ayer to resign as head of the chair? No. Because you are an independent thing. Now that talks about how independent and how impartial BBC is. Sir, I will be very direct with you. I believe, I have told this on national TV also, BBC has, was never independent. BBC will never be independent. A political appointee is there. There are a lot of Pakistanis who are infiltrated there. And not only that, are you running the agenda of British government and MI6? Because I believe somewhere down the line, they are running their agenda, whatever suits their narrative, because of the presence, BBC can form opinion, BBC can form a narrative, BBC can form things. And this is what has been happening. BBC never replied to one of my questions, which I have been shouting on national TV. I said in, in a country like India, when we're talking 1.4 billion people to do an opinion poll, um, usually have elections, to do an opinion poll, you have to have a few hundred people on the ground and it will take you at least two months for one state. Now, how many hundred of your people have been on ground? How many visas did you apply? How many visas did we give you? How many months and how many people have you interviewed to make this documentary? Or you simply did a fine editing work from YouTube and from this Hindi movie, Firak. I'm naming the movie now. So this is the reality of the movie that it was fed, it was given to them how to bring down Modi, how to stop India. And yet, with the linkage to Boris Johnson, with the linkage to Rishi Sunak, with the Goldman Sachs linkage, 800,000 pound loan linkage, and now Mr. Sharp is stepping down. Now, are we still, uh, you know, pumpkins to believe or Johnnies to believe that BJP is independent, uh, this uh, BBC is independent? BBC never was independent. This organized way where the government funded machinery is used to propagate it propaganda and nation. What was the idea? Idea is very simple, Sri sir. All our DGPs, DGPs are director general police. I'm not talking BJP ruled states. All the states of DG, DGPs met Mr. Amit Shah, the Home Minister of India, and they were all one uniform view. This documentary was meant to radicalize the Muslim youth. This documentary was meant, orchestrated at the right time to disrupt the 2024 elections. This documentary was meant to cause full, uh, mayhem in India and to have communal harmony disturbed. This documentary was meant to tell India how cruel Modi's look, what he has done to your fellow Muslims. This documentary was meant to demean the judiciary of India. This documentary was meant to say judiciary of India, law and order judiciary of India, police of India, intelligence of India, all are compromised. India is a goddamn compromised country. That is what the documentary was mentioned, oriented at. It had multiple areas. Modi, BJP, judiciary, law and order, India, you know, how free is the media? This was all orchestrated in one. And let me bring you a last point I want to make here. The Honorable Supreme Court said that there should be a case registered against Tista Stelwar. And remember, during the UPA era, she got a Padam Shri. She got a Padam Shri. Supreme Court said she had orchestrated a lot of evidence. Let a case be registered against her. She lives in a very palatial bungalow next to Amitabh Bachchan, which is a few hundred crores. Sanjeev Bhatt is still in jail and, D and this uh, DSP or SP, Shri Kumar, a case has been also registered with him. I think he got bail recently. But why has the Supreme Court directed that these people should be, case should be registered against them for concocting their evidence? And sir, the quantum of, you know, this red jihad is so well, you could hold hostage the prime minister of the country 22 years 22 years you could drag him for something which he has not done and you wanted to tarnish his image and aura at any cost this is what is happening Winstraw and lg protests here there same-sex marriages who is funding all this where does the money come from who was funding shaheen who was funding former protests where did the money come from 
what is Rihanna's interest? What is Greta Thunberg's interest? What is Mia Khalifa's interest? What has Mina Harris got to do with Kisan protests? These are some startling questions which we need to answer. And remember the hijab row in Bangalore. You know, the hijab row was made such a big deal. Then Rahul Gandhi seeing the BGP, this uh, BBC documentary is true without watching the documentary. He knows documentary is true. I mean, these are the kind of things which are happening. Money makes the merry go round, sir. If there is no money, there is no organized syndicate, nothing of this kind is happening. And if somebody tells me it is free journalism, free press, uh, we are not joining. I rest my case. <laughs> Thank you, Sumit, for the starting comments there. Um, one uh, thing that kind of bothers me a little bit, Sumit, Ji, is remember COVID happened. And when COVID happened, there was a rumor that the op Sp uh, spread saying that there are free buses available at the bus terminal for you to go to reach your hometown. There was no such thing. And uh, then, um, but then uh, everybody goes to the bus terminal and finds out there are no buses, no nothing. This guy lied through his teeth. But these are Jhopad Patis. You can't go and, you know, Tala Laga of your Jhopri and go. And as soon as they left, somebody else came and occupied them. Because these somebody else who occupied them don't belong to the citizens of India. See, what I'm trying to say is this has now made the democratic demographic distribution of Delhi in one direction. And you could see this thing as the COVID progressed that every street vendor who used to be from Bihar and Uttar Pradesh suddenly was from Rohingya. This is people living in Delhi. You live in Delhi. You probably yeah. saw this thing. And and why? See, the government knew that this fellow had lied. Uh, Arvind Kejriwal had lied. In fact, two, three days later, Priyanka Gandhi suddenly tries to make some uh, popularity out of it, saying that, well, Congress has sanctioned 200 buses to take people to their native villages. 50 buses turned up. Everywhere lies, lies, and more lies. So the government has some tools in its disposal to try and prevent this thing. For example, um, now, when the main workforce is trying to come back, where are they going to house them? Why isn't the government? See, at, at one point in time, I had mentioned this in my previous videos also. They knew that this entire area was only illegals. Why did? Why does the government hesitate to act on this, Sumitji? Sir, so there are three connotations to it. The first connotation is that in the peak of COVID. I, I, I'll take your uh, attention to one important thing which happened. In the peak of COVID, Mr. Kejriwal was spending 45 crores, around $7 million on the renovation of his government bungalow, which included demolition of eight quarters, which were given to some IS officers and two bungalows in the complex. He wanted to make his complex to 7.2 acres from four acres, which is, I think, uh, three times the size of Varsalis. He, that is what was in his mind. Right. Mr. Kejriwal was on TV every day complaining, Modi ji, we don't have oxygen, Modi ji, people are dying, Modi ji, do import vaccines, Modi ji, do this, Modi ji, do that. Uh, if 45 crores was spent on his renovation of his bungalow, which obviously he cannot run away, say, I don't know, not even one third of that was given to the COVID relief. Allegations were put that the PM Modi's uh, COVID fund is a farce, it's a private fund and there is uh, loot and plunder in it. Now, I think the fund that trustees Mr. Ratan Tata, I don't think... Uh, uh, personal stature of Tata is interested in any loot and plunder. I mean, that would be the greatest disrespect to one of the, uh, you know, one of the best men on planet Earth. So that these days happened. And in the peak of that, you played this ploy. Now, Sri sir, you are a scientific man. You understand science better than me. Now, in the peak of COVID, what was the strategy? Be where you were, right? If you get buses and if you send people home, you are taking it to the villages of India. We, we are grappling with the oxygen in steels. We do not have enough oxygen plants. We do not have a lot of enough oxygen. So was this a ploy to spread COVID into the distant villages and then said, okay, so many people died. Modi is responsible for that. Was this the ploy? What, what, what did the WHO, what did the older doctors advise? Be where you are. Because that is the way we can contain it. Because if it goes to the far-flung villages of India, it, the hell will break loose. It will be impossible to contain. Now, suddenly you come on a national TV and you have, you. by the way, the, the media budget of uh, Sarji is 495 crores he spent on uh, and uh, on the uh, on the media. 495 crores is how much in US dollars? It's around uh, uh, seven fives of 
by, around by, 70 by, million dollars yeah 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 yeah, yeah. by seventies around 70 million dollars now imagine if you have 70 million dollars of firepower you were giving ads and all these on the media and you were running paid ads as your appeals now suddenly you come and say there are buses available the poor chaps who are suffering who are bothered about their families are they came running so if there was one person who was infected when he got into that group 10 more got infected that is point number one and some people who went out they carried the virus to their homes to their relatives to their families was it the right thing to do is this what medical advice do is this what is scientific no this is not what is scientific but you still did it then priyanka gandhi said okay there are buses there are no buses there everybody was trying to make a political fortune by saying let us arrange buses and let's do that when government of india and got trains got things arranged got sanitization done and all then they said why are you charging ticket why the train is not free all kinds of politics politic uh, you know political games were played around that and with it was this rohingya thing how come she sir a rohingya knows he has to reach jammu how come a rohingya yes. knows he has to reach delhi how come to report this he knows. How, years ago. He knows. Who, who, who knows? How does he know? How does he know he will get an Aadhaar card made here? How does he know he will get a ration card made here? How does he know the fake Aadhaar cards are made here? That is the question. Why Rohingyas crossing a border from West Bengal or somewhere will reach all the way to Jammu, 1000 kilometers away? How does he know he has to reach Jammu or she knows he has to reach Jammu? Look at the crimes Rohingyas have done. Been given Aadhaar cards, they have been given ration cards. A, a, a alternate vote bank is created. We have seen an alternate vote bank was created in West Bengal. Now today, 35% of the Assam is Muslim because it because the people from Bangladesh came in. That was not the Muslim population. Today, 18% of UP is Muslim because of the people came in and and Didi and the, all the CPM when they were in power, they engineered this. So when there was a precedence of engineering this, because these engineerings are done by Reds and they are very good at that. They engineered it. So Mr. Kejriwal thought, let me also engineer it. So let me send a few people out and let these people come and occupy the street vendors. What did Yogi Adityanath Ji do? Yogi Adityanath Ji, the people who reached UP, sir, around 30 lakh laborers. 30 lakh is a big number. 300, 30 lakh is how much? Uh, 3 million. So 3 million people reached, reached UP, but Yogi Adityanath Ji made sure they get work in UP. They did not come to Delhi, but you are right. Who came to Delhi? Who, who occupied their seats? Why were they, why was this ploy done? What was this done? You had two objectives. One, what you rightly said. Second, you wanted to spread the virus. Possibly, medically, nobody would advise you to do an adventure in this. Uh, how could you get people under the one room? That is what the ploy has been. Because I, if I can be direct and blunt here, you wanted a lot of people to die there. You wanted to use this as a political tool against Modi. That would have been an ideal position to say, look, under Modi, so many people died. And remember, uh, some of the American publications came with that headline, Modi, the virus eclipses or something. There were, there were headlines like that. Modi bought this eclipses. Then there was somebody talking about this uh, bodies floating in Gang Ganga. And she said, remember Getty Images selling a picture of uh, some 23 pirates of what, you know, our cremation pirates dry, uh, burning together and trying to project this is what is happening in Nook and Corner of India. That was one. Though, you know, Though if our death rate is almost one third of what other people died in America, though our population is four times of America, that is also a reality of life. But see how the cabal was working, organized, how the papers were coming, how the articles were coming, how the Western media was bouncing, how Modi was being demonized. And on the top of that, Mr. Modi ji, why you are not importing the imported vaccines? Why you are made depending on made in India vaccine? And is it untrue to say that Aadhaar Kawala, the manufacturer of this vaccines he was threatened for some time he had to go to uk is it wrong to say Aadhaar puda wala was given y plus or, or y, y or y plus security why was he given and he even had a small extent though nothing happened to it he even had a small extent so when you join all the things and when you know violence is an accepted part of statecraft in red we call it red jihad the problem what we are facing is a red jihad wherein our people are used to break the system within us are used to cause the system within us even in the case of Nupur Sharma, the people who beheaded Kanahi Alal, first they went to his shop, then they videographed this, then they showed their knives, then they uploaded the video, then they said we are going to behead him, then they said we are going to Ajmer Sharif. Now usually does a terrorist operate like terrorist wants to operate, run and she, he doesn't want to be even known. Why was that done? That was again to start a Hindu-Muslim problem. Why in Udaipur, under the Congress regime, 
there was a right why the rights did not happen everywhere why in dantewada under the congress regime under the congress uh, rule we lost 11 of our great brave hearts to id it's unfortunate it can happen anywhere why is it happening why under upa 1 and upa 2 the bombs could go out any time ajmer delhi lucknow wherever isi could act at whims and fancies why one of our prime minister dismantled raw and we lost in middle east and pakistan 2005 2500 of our brave hearts and and who are directly indirectly affiliated with raw there are there are there are series of blunders sir there are sneeze of blunders there are sleaze there are there are series of treachery what people have done and you know with with with, with the kind of notion they had with the mindsets they had with the inclinations they had with with the affiliations they had i would use the word affiliations there now this is has been unfortunately the apathy of india this is we have been fighting and this red jihad is a new problem which we are fighting so this uh, farmer protest hindenburg adani documentary bharat jodo yatra where rahul gandhi ji say i met terrorist looked at me i looked at terrorist i don't know how does rahul gandhi ji have a binocular in his eyes or a microscope he can know between the thousands is he is a terrorist and mr gandhi made also sensational claim he said there are some women who came to me says rahul bhaiya we were raped uh, because our relatives and we were raped now when when the delhi police goes to me says uh, mr gandhi can you kindly tell us where were these women and who were these women so that we can act against them now mr gandhi doesn't know who who they are where they are but he raped members people coming to him he can recognize a terrorist from out of 100000 people because he has some special lenses in his eyes which differentiates between a man and a terrorist now these are practical apathies we live in sir and one thing which which really shatters my mind when in india we catch a big consignment of drugs big consignment a full container worth thousands may worth a 2 million dollars 10 million dollars where does the drug money go it goes to mafias or terrorists even in drug money when we cost and when we destroy debts they say oh it is being caught on adani sport my god we are not celebrating we have stopped a major funding of terrorism and gangs we have destroyed these drugs which will be used for terror against our people but the government is being questioned how come it is caught on adani sport i mean this is the reality we face ji sir this is the apathy we face ji i must uh, share one uh, fact here uh, sumit ji 911 happens then within 3 weeks united states mobilizes and decides that we are going to uh, stone uh, take uh, afghanistan back to stone age they draw out all the talibanis they went to the hills but they didn't finish them they they got uh, uh, osama bin laden in that tora bora hills but they didn't go inside to get them out then there was also the opium crop they never destroyed it they could have destroyed it then okay. and there they never did it so i mean as much as us tries to preach morals to other countries us has a lot of skeletons in its own cupboard i completely agree with you only few of us are asking these questions now based on the data that was there there's another interesting thing that happened pakistan kept saying that there was nobody from pakistan in afghanistan you know what happened there was a place called kunduz k u n d u z kunduz yeah. five thousand embedded operatives of pakistani army were airlifted at united states expense these buggers were all all over you uh, afghanistan spreading terror helping taliban out but not yeah. a single word not a single line of action has been taken by the united states us said oh we need pakistan to get our uh, supplies to our troops in afghanistan and this story went on and on till like recently when us stuck its uh, tails between the legs and you know abandoned everything and came back so i have problems with that yeah. also and i'm 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 asking them these questions so everybody somewhere something you know they have they say something they do something exactly the opposite but all that is fine uh, i mean this is you know fact of life now um, so viji my question to you sir is you said talked about winstron you talked about foxconn and some of these things India has a special force called the Central Industrial Security Force. Is there a way India can try and make sure that the areas around this, because for seven thousand people to have gathered, there must have been some mobilization. You know, it's basically intelligence and also making sure Money? that you have checkposts perhaps a little bit further out from the plant, so you don't allow people to go in unless they have a properly issued identity card or some such thing like that. 
are there some things like this like a perimeter that's being drawn to ensure at least till they find their own you know effective security so that they don't have to uh, you know depend on the indian government is the indian government trying to do something like that so i'll answer the question uh, if you look at winstron winstron was first taiwanese major manufacturer to set shop in india that was irking the communist party of china and communist party of china is 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 a dangerous organization i mean there will be no doubt about it though the ccp says uh, george soros is the biggest international terrorist they say on one hand but when it comes to the collaboration with him they will also do the collaboration there is no part they will do some direct indirect collaboration with him. usually if you look at the campus of infosys in bangalore you will see that is guarded by the cisf i have been always advocating that all the important installations of india should be guarded by cisf all the strategic installations of india should be guarded by cisf i'll give you an example in the peak of covid suddenly there was a tv debate that there was a short circuit in the serum and shoot what is serum and shoot sir where we were making our covid vaccines serum and shoot last 72 years there has been not a fire incident now suddenly there's a there's a short circuit and one part of the serum and shoot is burned down we were told that uh, diphtheria and some dpt vaccines got affected but later on shri sir what happened our capability to produce and ramp up the production of the covid vaccine was adversely affected you must have seen that but luckily bharat biotech guys come in and and they chip in and you, you know how bharat biotech vaccine was not given the un approval for 6 months while covaxin yeah. uh, this uh, chinese uh, we call as fake vaccine sinopharm and yeah, others Sinovac, were given approval when sinovac the chinese sinovac and sinopharm The I know that never worked. <laughs> I call them Chinese virus. Was given the approval when the doctor of the China said that this has seventy-three fatal, the seventy-three side effects and thirty-four fatal side effects. You know the vaccine has not worked in China. Vaccine has not worked anywhere. United Nations for six, seven months was blocking us, and the Chinese vaccine was given approval. This is what is happening at international level, right? Our, our vaccine got wrapped up. Then the Bharat Biotech came in and the Kerala came in. and we were lucky enough mahadev ki kripa rahi god has been great with us by mahadev and we could we could save ourselves how did a short circuit happen in a serum institute now why institutions like serum institute are not protected by cis why we don't have protocols i have even advocated a lot of times sir our all jails should be protected by cis because local police has to live locally they come under influence they come under pressure they come under thing how are people like atik ahmed able to run a samraj like a like a court from a from a jail how are these gangsters able to run their syndicates from jail from how are they able to get those uh, air conditioners those led tvs and all because this is what it is done now if you have now uh, for example where ecil where uh, where a lot of our work is done like dr they are protected by cis we have no dearth of population we do have no dearth of manpower in my opinion i have educated this a lot of time shri sir any strategic installation private or government we have to get out of this mindset it is government or private any strategic installation any goddamn strategic installation which is of national security or national importance should be protected by cis you should hand it over to cis the internal security can be their own but the external security can be cis look at the campus of infosys there's a qrt team deployed cis is protecting the infosys campus why not a wipro why not a tcs are we waiting for a disaster to happen because because i am you know network centric warfare and breaking you within using your own and sabotage will be the most potent weapon in the time to come and god only knows how many things have we prevented and at times it is rightly said sir in hindi you have to be successful we have to we have to be successful 100 times they have to be successful once that is the reality of life that is the kind of problem we are facing with but we have the capability we have to raise it and now uh, yesterday i was reading that the army has now uh, and you know show on friday we were just suggesting this on thursday that we need a dedicated cyber warfare unit in every army unit and yesterday i don't know to god god listen to prayer so what now yesterday we have come up with an article wherein the, this will be kept in in keeping mind in keeping mind uh, china because every day we are getting hack hacking attempts from china we are getting hacking attempts from ukraine we are getting hacking attempts from everywhere and dark web is becoming a dangerous thing and let me tell you sir before uh, unfortunate 
incident of our former CDS Bipin Awad, two days before that, on the dark web, his photo was crossed. His photo was crossed. What happened? What did it? Who did it? We have no idea. Enquiry is on, but I have my feeling, you know, there's something was wrong there. My 16 helicopters are very reliable. The Reiki helicopter was one. No flares, no SOS, no distress calls, and we lose our five star general in peace times. We lose our five star general in peace times. Now, in, 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 in a 30 minute flight. Now, if my six helicopters are unreliable, how come the Prime Minister and Mr. Shah and Mr. Rajnath Singh are still using them? Well, my six helicopters are not unreliable, but what happened in that day? We don't know who was behind that we don't know was was a was it a sabotage was it a network centric warfare what exactly it was we have no idea but there's a lot we can do i have been propagating for three things on even on the national tv sir first thing is a nation why we need something like a patriot act where we can take them before we don't have to be reactive a nationwide ats anti-terrorist squad with national jurisdiction no goddamn state subject third we need a STF, Special Task Force, which is just given to eliminate all these rogues, you know, within the India. And if push comes to shove, now looking at the stature of India and looking at where we are and looking at the kind of threats we are facing, if we have to take out our enemies out of India as well, we should have the overt and covert capabilities to do it. We have to act beyond the enemy lines. And we have to be able to deliver wherever the enemies of the state are. because. Handful of people cannot challenge a 1.4 billion nation, cannot challenge the, the country with the third powerful military in the world and the fifth largest economy. We have to come up to that and we have to start hitting them wherever they are. Because time has come. Because our quantum of our enemies and the number of our enemies, Shri sir, is increasing. A lot of forces, a lot of people, a lot of cabals are coming after us. And people like George Soros have come in open. It's not an you are in mine... Uh, you know, thought process are this is they have been open and said what they have to say. But now time has come and we need a nationwide cyber security uh, forum, regiment, battalion, whatever you want to do it, let the experts and the politicians decide it, but which will have a national jurisdiction because these kind of things are going to happen. Our military assets, our parliament, our grids, our banks, everything is attacked. Remember during the COVID time, Sri sir, we, there, were, there were attempts of hostile takeovers. Chinese were trying to silently take over the HDFC bank, which was stopped well in time. Even those things were happening. Winstrow, how does a gas leak from a closed LG plant where people die? How does a poison gas leak there? There's nobody in the plant. How did it happen? Right? How did it happen? These are the wonders of the world. Serum and shoot catches fire. You know, so many sabotages. How many nuclear scientists have we lost? What happened to Mr. Nambi Narayanan? We know, we know these, these, this is our realities of life. How many people have been killed? And I'll tell you one important thing, sir. Uh, I don't know, should I talk or not, but let me talk. It's, it's important to talk about it. We have the biggest thorium reserves in the world. First, our thorium, uranium thorium reactor is almost operational or getting operation. Five more are building. And a lot of people have started ganging upon that. China has invested a lot of money in Sri Lanka, keeping thorium in mind. A lot of things are happening in Tamil Nadu, keeping thorium in mind. A lot of issues are being cropped up, keeping thorium in mind, and they don't want us to get this. And Homi Jahangir Baba had conceptualized this thorium uranium reactor way long back. And you know what happened to Homi Jahangir Baba. How did he get eliminated? What were the circumstances? We all know that. And still these challenges are there. We, we live in the present day. So we, if we have to protect our interests, we have to be proactive now. We cannot afford to be reactive, sir. We have to be proactive and we must have the muscle to muzzle the people who are a national security threat. It's as simple as, as plain as well because we can't risk the safety and security of 1.4 billion people. It's just one-sixth of the world human, humanity what we're talking about. Thank you so much, Sumitji. And I just want to leave one thought with uh, you viewers. The average family size of a Rohingya family that comes to India is 12. 10 children, husband and wife. And, and the wife is probably in her 30s. So, you can exp so this is a big population bomb that will explode in 5-10 years. India needs to act today. 
I don't know what India will do. They tried sending back five illegal Bangladeshis. 20,000 Muslims came to support them, to not allow Himanta Biswa Sarma to send these five people back across the border. Everything was arranged. The Bangladeshis were expecting them. Say, these are five illegals we are sending you. 20,000 people came. And, and they should have rounded up the entire lot and sent them out. RBI had to come in to send those five people out. India had to make that statement. But this is the reality on the ground. We can all sit in our drawing rooms and say a lot of things. But at least let us understand that it's not so easy for this government to do it. Especially when they, you have rogues and scoundrels running some of the state governments. That's all I can say. Even, in fact, primary accused murderers are chief ministers today. This is the situation in India. Just wanted to put that in perspective that it is not so easy. But please, especially voters of Karnataka, vote correctly. You do, don't do that. Sir, uh, it's going to be even more trouble around you. Every state in the South will start thinking they are bigger than what they actually are. They're all pygmies. Anyway, thanks for uh, that explanation, uh, Sumitji. Let's. You want to say something? Then we can go to questions. Just two, two sentences. Sir, uh, what you said, even today, cattle are being smuggled from West Bengal to Bangladesh. And who are these cattle? These are cows. Cow smuggling is happening. We, I'm I mean, it has been contained to some extent. We might say, Gai hamari mata. Gai is like a mata. But the cow smuggling is happening even as on today. It is not stopped. Point number two. When Congress government was in Karnataka, 1,600 PFI activity, uh, in when BJP was before Congress, 1,600 people were identified and cases were put against them. When Congress came to power, all of their cases were withdrawn and they were let go. PFI was a time bomb which was ticking. Imagine how Yasin Badkal could, could act as per hymns and fancies across India. It is only Amit Shah who did the surgical strike on PFI. And if people who took charges against the PFI back, if they come back to power, you will have multiple PFIs this time. And by the time you wake up and want to do things, it might be too late. And, you know, if I, I can be direct, if I can be very direct, Things are on your side and your way of life is only safe till the time your demography is safe. If demography changes, everything changes, including so-called secularism of India. I rest my case. Thank you so much, Samiji. I also wanted to touch base on this recent happenings in Rajasthan, where there are enclaves of Hindus who have returned from Pakistan. These guys are being bashed up by the local goons. Yeah. And, and Rajasthan is again a Congress. Yeah. Listen, guys, these people have to be taught a lesson. For once, allow BJP to form ministries in every state. They will make sure that they deliver. But you need to get rascals and goons out first. That is my two cents on this. Let's take some questions. We are already 42 minutes. I don't know how time spent. Time got spent. It was just very, very fast. First question, please. Mr. Barani Chandar wants to know, why did BJP so bad about its policy communications like the farm law, Agnimir, NEET, CAA, the whole lot? When will DY learn? Uh, when will they learn? Lot more harder reform and need to be implemented in the future. Can they do it? Uh, Chandar, sir, Namaskar. The problem is, if I can be direct with you and not politically correct, the day all the Hindus vote for BJP and don't get divided in region, caste, language, creed, Hindu, Jat, Saxena, Maratha, Tamilian, Brahman, Dravidian, and all that, then we'll be able to do that. For doing, we need to have constitutional change. We need two-third majority. If you have two-third majority in the parliament, if Modi can wipe out 35 and 370, which was conceived to be impossible in Indian politics. Impossible. You cannot touch it. Remember, Mahbubha Mukti told us, Tiranga ko kanda dene wala koi nahi milega. There will be nobody to shoulder the Tiranga. And khun ki nadiya bhaegi. There will be a river, reverse of blood flowing in Kashmir. If that could be done, this can be done. But are we enabling the enablers? That that is the question we have to ask ourselves. Let's let, let's think nation first, then everything else. Things will fall in place, sir. Next question, please. Jahangir Gotla, does this government have the conviction to take any hard stand? I have felt this, therefore agree with Sumit. India needs its covert regimen, take care of all problems internal and external. Um, yes, uh, Jahangir, we, we have been advocating this. In fact, today in the morning, I had a session about how the Hindus for Human Rights are designed exactly after the Jewish uh, Voice for Peace. This is a 
uh, uh, Soros organization that he did and effectively used that organization to bring Israel to its knees. And they want to do the and same I, thing in India. They, in fact, remember, they unseated Bibi Netanyahu. But the Israelis are smart. They figured out what the plan was. And now Bibi Netanyahu is back as the prime minister. Anyway, so the, the long and short of it is HFHR got into the top gear in September 2019. Why September 2019? August 5th, 2019 was when 370 was abrogated. Please understand, Correct, I am giving you everything, all the timelines. Nobody can refute all these facts. But at least Correct. These understand, are read and share and subscribe to these channels. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. I, I want to make one point, sir. You see, you know, you see what is happening in, for example, in Bihar. You see what is happening in West Bengal. You see what is happening in Tamil Nadu. You see what is happening in Kerala. You see what is happening in uh, what was happening in JNK, right? What is happening in Punjab? We have so many vulnerabilities, and with it, what you can do is you can manage some things. You can you have to trade off some things. You have to manage some things. For getting the hardcore reforms done, you need absolute power. Absolute power can only come with a two-third majority. And when this country decides we want the change, there are people who are capable of bringing the change. A lot of change has been brought. A lot of change has been brought. But there is still a lot of work to do. That is on your and my hand. Do we go to vote or on a voting day? We think it's a chutti. Let's look at the nearest hill station and you know let's plan a day's outing and things like that. You know, uh, if you look at uh, the voting percentage in the metros, it is it is it is minuscule, and it is the people or the villages or the suburbs who come and vote. But everybody's vote matters, your vote matters, my vote matters. We well, usually think what will happen with my vote, but everyone matters. And let's not look at the pity issues. Let's look at the issues of national level and survival. National and survival will have the answer, sir. Next question, please. Rahul Rathod wants to know, why government doesn't declare BBC, DW France, 24, CBC, VOA, Al Jazeera as state media or foreign agent? They should be considered as propaganda instead of free speech officially by law. Sir, I'll, I'll, Rahulji Namaskaram, I'll answer you on one question. Very recently, I think it was 15th August or 26th January, Honorable Prime Minister said one thing, Gulami ki har zanjeer todni hai. Every shakal, shakal of so-called Gulami or that imperialism has to be broken. What is Al Jazeera? Al Jazeera is a channel run by Qatar, which has a population of 3 million. My colony will have possibly more people there. And that, if we consider that as epitome of truth, if we consider BBC as epitome of truth, if we consider TV4 as a epitome of truth, they will continue. It is in our mind. The day I consider my XYZ, I don't want to name channels, XYZ channels as truth. For me, I'll take one name. Doordarshan is always better than a BBC. So it is the day you have confidence on yourself when you believe you, when you believe me, when you believe Srisha, when you believe our media, that is true. But if you say these all are liars and BBC and Al Jazeera and all this TV 14 are the epitomes of that is a thing what we have to change in our minds. Because for somewhere, for Srisha and me and people like us, our roots are here. We are made from this soil and we will never betray our soil. That's all I can say, sir. Next question, please. Karthike Sharma wants to know, when will the left liberals support lifting ban on BBC documentary if government says it will lift ban on all docs, films, books that are currently banned in India? Will the left you liberals see, support? Uh, they have been, you see, I'll tell you what happened when the BBC documentary got released. Uh, for example, Jadapur University, for example, JNU, they were they were having the mass screening of that movie. They were organizing students, they were getting them into those empty theaters, they were getting them into the conference rooms or these big, uh, what do you call, seminar rooms where the movie was shown. If this was not about an agenda, what is the need? How many movies or documentaries get released on a YouTube every day? Maybe a million, maybe half a million, I don't know. Uh, how many times you've been seeing they have been collected and all the colleges are showing them? This documentary was meant to radicalize the Muslim youth. It is as simple as that. That's all the DGPs of India are of the common opinion. So this documentary was not stopped. So burn India at any cost. You see, oil, pharma, and arms are three powerful lobbies. And what they want is a 
very weak and mumble government here who is corrupt and can be managed with this government they are not weak they are not mumble they are not corrupt they cannot be managed and when they talk of india first that is where the problem is and uh, sir before 2024 our elections you can expect in every 6 to 10 days there will be one more tamasha one more pandora's box which will be opened and we we are prepared for that we know it's going to happen after 24 by the time the new government is not sworn in and i and possibly it will be prime minister modi by the time he doesn't take the oath these kind of things will not stop sir within 10 days new tamasha sridam wants to know sumit ji namaste when everyone is vilifying soros why no word about rothschild if ever heard of his antics other than the fact that he's a banker and a so called philanthropist uh, shriram ji namaskaram uh, you see rothschilds there is no direct linkage which we, which has been found somewhere and they directly come up and talked about it while as soros has directly openly come and spoken about it he has pledged money he has said i want modi to go i want this bjp to go that is where the difference is it's it's like a it's like a, a known enemy and an enemy behind the curtain where curtain gives some benefit of doubt but if you are out in the open you are explicit and direct about it there is no benefit of doubt it is as clear as when i see my picture in the mirror that's where the thing is next question please kumarila bhatta wants to know how would california state define the child's caste of a hindu married to a person from a different race because caste is diluted here You want to take a ch- shot at this answer? Uh, the answering this? Yes, I will answer that. Uh, Kumarila, this will never be implemented because something similar was hap- uh, became a law in United Kingdom. It has not been implemented. It's impossible to implement it. This whole thing is a way to keep the pot boiling, divide Hindus amongst themselves to try and deny some people their legal rights to be to be able to rise to the best of their potential. but unfortunately the optics are such that and the money that has been uh, you know put through the system is such that people are just looking at the money and the funding they are getting for voting yes and they are closing their eyes closing their nose and saying yes two republicans also voted for sb403 it was a 110 vote the committee consists of 11 people it was a 110 vote two republicans why it is believed that their leader harmeet dhillan who is a khalistani supporter told them that this is the right thing to do and who is harmeet dhillan people in khalistani people are not being put in jail why is she not being investigated then another guy called joker called shergil that guy also needs to be investigated these two are enablers for khalistan anyway i guess i my guess is that india will not sign the free trade agreement with uk until uk hands over some of these khalistani lumpens back to india if it doesn't happen then i'm so, i'm sorry the funding for us is coming from uk that's why the connection go ahead sir in fact i want to add one point uh, honestly uh, uh, bhatta ji namaskaram what is happening there was two days back there was a statement by piyush goel ji where he said that the, on the, with the european union or we are on the verge of signing merge when he was asked about the uk he said the things are being talked about so if i interpret this uh, you know the statement with a political lens that means uh, european union it's almost done with the rupee trade and i think argentina was the last country agreed on rupee trade now there are 21 countries which have agreed to the rupee trade and if we get european union we get another 28 countries so it will be a big development but with uk the things are not moving at the quantum of the pace what uk would want us to move it because one of the bone of contention is even after prime minister modi spoke to rishi sunak there is not a lot of action with with these khalistan is which has happened it's not only khalistan sir with uk we have one more problem a lot of economic offenders are there a lot of pakistanis are there a lot of money laundering is happening from there a lot of isi networks are being operated from uk a lot of drug routes are happening and a lot of things are happened from uk which are anti india and what was what was really shattering to us as india was when you know this bbc documentary came look at the timing look at the event look at the uh, look at the agenda look at how it was kind of engineered it's it's like you engineer a boat to bolt to fit into a groove it was as engineered as that and uh, you know all from youtube and this firak movie so now 
we are not stupid to understand what are you up to now mr sunak has to deliver and when it comes to our national integrity of course with prime minister modi there are no compromises next question please ramani kritivasan wants to know sir what action government is contemplating on bringing that bringing back the ex navy personnel held in qatar five retired officers uh, right? they are about to be hung i heard ramani ji namaskar unfortunately the news what i have is not good Uh, there is no official word from mea as for best of my knowledge but i think uh, qataris are stubborn on them and uh, you know you know qatar is trying to flex his muscles because uh, after we have uh, there have been two developments which have happened uh, our kaveri uh, basin well number 3 is operational and we have done uh, i think a deal with uh, algeria for natural gas and also with egypt so with, with this egyptian gas algerian gas gas and uh, the kaveri basin coming and we have also some gas we are expecting from saklen so our dependence on qatari gas will be reduced to one third right today qatar controls 74% of the total natural gas of the world with a 3 million population they have highest per capita income in the world and uh, there are radical elements qatar has been finding all kinds of muslim extremists i will be very direct now these people are unfortunately unfortunately using our uh, these or navy chaps has pawns on the game of chess on the political chess and uh, the news mi- might might not be very good and it might shatter our hearts and minds and we all might we all we all might be feeling depressed about it and might even get cry i i, I don't know sir and that's what it is Chaitanya Takli wants to know Sumit ji can India consider supporting East Turkestan rebels to keep China busy on their western front uh what i have to say you sir namaskaram what i have to say you this uh, sff this was a force which was long back active special frontier force now sff is under raw and after modi ji came in sff was rotting decaying and getting defunct so the mountain brigade is made sff is made and sff has one uniqueness the most of the sff guys are tibetians so they understand tibetian they understand chinese they understand indian they have in routes into tibet they have contacts into tibet now with the mountain brigade which we have come up which is which are which is which is specialized to handle china at lac and with the, this sff which has been revamped i can i use the word completely revamped it's like a rebooted if i in a computer language we see and upgraded now today if the push comes to shove we have the capability even to strike beyond the enemy lines in china and we are the only country sir which with through sff and other assets we even have ground intel on the china now so we may not need to support rebels though uyghurs have approached us officially and asked us to support but that is a long shot because uh, you know right right now the priority would be to cross the 5 trillion mark because once you cross the 5 trillion mark and if you are done with the 24 elections then you have five good years and by the next elections will come will be already at 8 9 trillion by the time you will be the third uh, economy your military budgets will come up your things will come up and a lot of political mess within the country has to be cleaned a lot of things need to be cleaned and sir let's not forget it is 65 years of rot which will take time to clean i, I can't say more <laughs> true um, kishore tvk wants to know thank you kishore ilhan omar throws lies 200 million genocide got goats it belongs to bjp how to file a de- defamation on her in usa kishore there is no way to file defamation on these things politicians will lie to, through their teeth you see ro karna one day he says one thing the next day he says the opposite that way he feels that both sides are being kept happy in fact the truth could be the other side that both are unhappy because they can never trust him to say only one thing that is how reality is and and just let it go why do you care why do you care we are working to try and make sure that she is booked under law you can't marry your own saga bhai has she yes for immigration purposes and this is a lifetime thing it applies for lifetime she brought her brother My. who was living in uk said that she was going to marry him and then that guy comes in he gets a green card she's already married to another guy her guy her husband children her brother and she everybody gets public housing 
they get uh, admission in a college they all go and get degrees once the degree is done and the brother has got his green card wow he is divorced this is a lifetime crime i i i even i she said i even heard uh, some some that she is divorced already three times and she is worth yeah, 80 yeah, million yeah. or 100 million dollars as we she is so where did the money come from ji you came as a refugee there, asylum seeker nahi hai khane ko nahi hai there are questions even about that see she is the daughter of a somali colonel colonel okay and in in Sofa, somali there was a uh, you know strife who were the ones who were the barbarians it was the army how can an army Correct. colonel then say oh i need refuge and asylum everything is a sham okay everything is a sham under obama obama was a big goofball people don't realize it only now they are seeing it this guy is a screwed up case socialist he wants his he, i'm telling you today he wants his uh, wife to be the president next president of united states they are calculating that biden won't last long they will remove kamala on some excuse because they thought it will be too drastic to bring in michelle right away they will bring in michelle uh, obama as the vice president and then this guy will go meet his maker and she'll become the president she won't even stand for election they know if she stands for election she will lose because people will now start saying obama did all these things much easier to connect the dots now this is the insidious uh, want, plan they have yeah go ahead i want to three points of obama i want the people and our uh, you know viewers to look at one thing what was the business of china of united states before obama and after obama's eight years yes how yes. My, who said china is the innovation of the world who said china is the factory of the world who opened all technology transfers to uh, to china who moved the american industry to china who went to turkey and the, for the first time said assalamu alaikum which american president went for the funeral of saudi king with the first lady which is watch again exception because american presidents don't go you find the answer and you will have one common name barack hussein obama and i respect his well his half brother also still lives in shanghai in china you you have to find out where his treasures are buried it will come out it will come out it's just a matter of time thank you once again sumit ji and and viewers please like share and subscribe to our channel don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications i should thank topsy turvy for your generous uh, donation thank you so much and always you know follow sumit ji on twitter s u m i t p 191 there you go and my handle is rir1 and uh, the uh, the p gurus handle is p gurus1 do follow us on twitter you get a lot of news updates throughout the day and please help us grow namaskar